chapter 12, part 2, back with the rather weird Novak Cutter and Darkus. Oh, you're so dull. Novak slapped her hands down on the dress in frustration. Why are you still here? Darkus persevered. Those weird men you saw, they're the ones with all the beetles in their house. They've come here to sell the insects to your mother. It must be an unusual infestation, Novak said, surprised. Mater's not in the pest control business. She visited them, Darkus said. That day you saw me in the window. I wondered why you were in that horrible street. And you dropped your card for me. You make it sound as if I were in love with you, Novak bristled. I'm not. I'm practising being in love. There's a difference. She clenched her fists. It's important for my acting, and you don't even have the decency to play along. She stamped away and threw herself into the enormous armchair. You obviously don't think I'm a bit pretty because you keep wanting to talk about icky bugs. Please don't get upset, Darkus approached her chair. I'm just looking for my dad. Well, I don't know where he is. The thing is, these beetles, I think they're somehow linked to my dad's disappearance. They're different from normal beetles. They're special. And that's why I want to protect them. One of them's Baxter, my best friend. Your best friend is a beetle, Novak scoffed. Yeah, would you like to meet him? Darkus knelt down at her feet, took off his backpack and pulled out Baxter's jam jar. It's alive! Novak shrunk back into the chair. Oh no, I don't like it. Get it away from me. Darkus unscrewed the lid, putting Baxter on the flat of his hand. He's harmless. Baxter lifted his elytra and flew straight back into the jar. It flew, Novak said amazed. I've never seen a beetle fly before. She leant forwards. Usually he sits on my hand quite happily, Darkus said puzzled. Perhaps he doesn't like me, Novak said mournfully. It's probably this room, Darkus looked around. It's full of dead beetles. You wouldn't like to be in a room full of dead people, would you? Novak shook her head. It's all right, Baxter. Novak is a friend. Darkus turned the jar on its side and put his hand out. Baxter didn't move. Come on out and say hello and then you can go back into the jar and I'll put you safely away in my bag, I promise. Novak laughed as Darkus talked to the beetle but stopped when Baxter walked forward and stepped onto his hand. Beetles can't understand humans, she said astonished. That's right, Darkus said bringing his hand before Novak. Ordinary beetles can't but I told you, these aren't ordinary beetles. Darkus ran his finger over Baxter's glistening wing cases. Say hello to Baxter, don't be silly. Pretend you're in a movie and Baxter is a handsome soldier returning from battle. But he's a beetle, Novak was appalled. A big, spiky, gross one. Call yourself an actor, Novak pouted. All right, give me a moment. She sank back into the chair, closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Opening her eyes again, she sat up and lowering her head and looking through fluttering eyelashes, said in an American accent... What a pleasure it is to make your acquaintance, Corporal Baxter. I've heard many great things about your bravery in battle. Baxter lowered his horn. He bowed. Novak looked at Darkus in surprise. He's returning your greeting, Darkus smiled. Will he fly for me, do you think? Novak asked, excited. I don't see why not. Darkus whispered to the beetle, waving his index finger in a pattern in the air. Baxter spread his wings and jumped into flight, making a noisy circuit of the room, the vibration of his wings throbbing like a distant engine. Novak laughed with delight. Can I touch him? I'm sure he won't mind. Darkus grinned as the beetle landed on his hand. Novak reached out and gave Baxter's thorax a gentle stroke before touching the tip of his horn. Ow! It's like a needle, she exclaimed, holding out her hand in front of Darkus's. Can I hold him? Baxter was already crawling onto Novak's palm. I think he likes you. Really? Novak smiled at Darkus. Gosh, he's heavy, isn't he? Lifting his elytra, Baxter opened his flying wings and jumped into the air. He zoomed in a figure of eight around Darkus and Novak, returning to her outstretched hand. He does like me, laughed Novak happily. Darkus held the jar on its side and Baxter crawled inside. So you see, my best friend is a beetle, he said, putting the jar into his rucksack. Now, do you believe that I need your help? Well, yes, but I can't help you. I mean, what can I do? Do you know if your mother knows my dad? His name's Bartholomew Cuttle. He works at the Natural History Museum. Novak shrugged. She does know a lot of people at the museum, but I don't know who they are. I've never heard that name before, and I'd remember it because it sounds like mine. She looked at him curiously. Is Cuttle your surname too? Darkus nodded. Cutter? Cuttle? He sounded the names out. Your name sounds sharper. Cutter's not Mater's real name. Did you know that? Darkus shook his head. What's her real name? Lucy Johnstone. Isn't that a nice, friendly-sounding name? She changed her name to Lucretia Cutter before I was born when she set up her business. Cutter is what they call a tailor who invents patterns for clothes. It's good for a fashion designer, but I think Lucy Johnstone is much prettier. Well, whether your mother knows my dad or not, I still need to find out where she wants those beetles and what she plans to do with them. 
Is mate your enemy? Nobak asked, frowning. Dargus felt his cheeks grow hot as he tried to answer. I don't know. Maybe if you explain to her why she shouldn't kill beetles. Nobak shook her head. Nothing stops her from getting what she wants. Look at how amazing Baxter is. If she knew he were here, she'd make him into a trophy, just like poor Onothagus Taurus. A chill travelled down Darkus' spine as he realised the danger he was putting Baxter in, bringing him into this house. I should go, he pulled on his backpack. Look, I understand why you can't help us, but I'll be your friend for life if you can help me and Baxter get out of here without being seen. I've never had a friend. Novak sounded the word out like it was new to her. Well, you must have school friends. I don't go to school, she shook her head. I have a tutor, Miss Boyle. Well, I'm your friend now, and Baxter's your friend too, Darker said, and if you can help me get out of here, we'll have a secret as well, which makes us even better friends. A secret? Oh yes, I like that. Novak leapt to her feet. Friends are much better than boyfriend and girlfriend. Much. If Mater knew we were friends, she would forbid it. Novak's eyes were shining. Why? Well, she says I don't need friends because everyone will want to be my friend when I'm famous. That's not friendship. Do you think being famous is silly? A person ought to be famous for doing something really good or really difficult, like climbing Mount Everest or landing on Mars, replied Darkus. If you were a famous explorer, I'd think you were amazing. How about a spy? Novak asked, looking mischievous. A spy? You want to find out what Mater and your neighbours are planning? Darkus nodded. Well, only a world-famous spy can help you then. She shot him a look loaded with mystery, walked to the bookshelf and pulled on a large red book. The section of shells that made up that part of the wall slid backwards. You have secret passages in your house. Darkus's jaw dropped open. They aren't secret if you know where they are, Novak said, stepping into the gap between the shelves. Okay, that's it for this week then, guys. Uh, back next week with chapter 13, The White Room. wonder what's in there. Have a lovely weekend. See you Monday.